Hello my fellow learners, thanks for joining me in this tutorial on how to set up your answer grid for the logic puzzle. You'll see here on the screen that I have several sizes for the answer grid. Remember this is the space in which your solver will start eliminating choices uh, according to different size puzzles. Your minimum size there is the, the 10 by 10. This, uh, this, by the way, indicates the size of the table that will be necessary. So to set up the table, I'm going to go to, uh, and this is in Microsoft Word, to this Insert Table icon up at the top of the screen. If you don't have this, it might also be available here in the regular menu bar where it says Table. So let's go ahead and select that. And I want to draw a table. And now I have the uh, insert table indicator here. And I want it to be 10 by 10. So let's set that up. Now it's going to fill the screen right away, so don't worry about that. We, we will resize that in a moment. Let's go ahead and take the last four columns of the top row there. We're going to go ahead and right click and merge. Now go ahead and pause at any time you need if you're following along on your own document, but I'm doing that similarly to the next four as I count off from the right. It's giving me a place for a header to indicate what field this is going to be. This is going to be field two, and I'm going to go ahead and, and center that. This is going to be field three, as you'll see in just a, just a moment. Okay, likewise I'm going to do the same thing for a header. Right click, merge. The next four, right click, merge. And this is going to be for the first and second field. Now I'm going to want to change the direction. So once, once again I'm going to right click. I'm going to change my text direction. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and center that. I just like things nice and even there. And I think I can even, there we go, I'm going to put it right in the middle of the cell for now. So let's go ahead and, and uh, I think I can do that in one step. Oh, nope, we need to change the direction too, don't we? Again, these are right click operations. Okay, now I'm ready to enter in my entities here. So again, let's use our pizza puzzle scenario. Notice that we're going to typically arrange them in alphabetical order. That's fairly customary. Let's go ahead with pizza toppings, green pepper. I may want to shrink that here, um, working backwards in alphabetical order. Yeah, that's right, pepperoni. And let's go ahead with mushroom. So I might, just for the sake of size here, I may size those down a bit. And I can always left click and drag the size there. There we go. I'm going to want to repeat those over here in um, field two. Notice how these two will echo each other. I'm not going to worry about how this is increasing the size of my columns right at the moment because I am going to right click and I'm going to change the direction just like that. And let's go ahead and change the size just a little bit here. Maybe once again. There we go. And uh, I think I'm going to align them here right in the middle of the column. That was a right click cell alignment and I chose this middle box here or maybe that bottom one. I'll bring them down to the, the bottom margin. Okay, so now I'm ready to erase some lines here. I don't need these four quadrants. I needed to complete this the table, which is square, but I'm going to highlight them. I am going to right-click, and we're going to go to Borders and Shading. 
Now at this point, I get uh, um, the borders tab up, and I want to eliminate the borders on all but this bottom and right side. So I'm going to leave this line, and if I take it off, I can always add it back. But I'm going to get rid of the middle and the top there, and then this left vertical and middle vertical. And there you go, you see those have now been erased. Similarly, I want to do that for this 4x4, four 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 grid over here. That's the right click, borders and shading. This time, however, I want to keep the top and the left right here and here. So let's get rid of those lines. Okay, and that's going to ghost those out and they won't appear on your, um, on your finer answer. answer uh, answer grid. Let's go ahead and fill out field three here with our headings. I think we have, uh, oh, I don't know if I can do this in alphabetical order off the top of my head. We've got thin crust. We had our party pizza. That's the really big tray pizza. We had uh, hand tossed. And we have our pan pizza or deep dish, however you want to call that. Let's go ahead and highlight, right click text direction. Let's get that vertical there. I want to right click. Let's go ahead to cell alignment and put it in the middle of the column. Let's go ahead and shrink these columns a little bit. So I'm going to uh, hold the left mouse button down and drag over all of them. I'm going to right click and let's go ahead to table properties. Select the column tab and I'm going to give it a, a smaller size here. Uh, let's try 0.4 to start with, and that makes it a little smaller. That's not too bad. If I want to um, change the um, the row width here, I can highlight my rows, right-click Table Properties, the Row column. Evidently, things aren't quite square. Let's try 0.2. That's a little better. Let's try right-click again, Table Properties. Oops. Let's bump it up maybe to 0.3. That, that's a little more square there. Maybe that's the size that you want. And there you go. That's how to create the answer grid. If you want to do some additional line darkening for the outside borders, you can left click, drag over a portion. And we can go down to borders and shading once again. And this time, I'm going to click off of a line. And then I'm going to pick a thicker line and click back and you'll see then that provides a, a bolder line there for that bottom portion to separate field one for, from field two. So play through again as you need to get the directions if you're planning on using Microsoft Word to create your table.